It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Midland live from Bar Canada at the D in downtown Las Vegas. What's up? What's up? It's happening. Not much. I see above your uh, shoulder there that uh, they're doing a whole thing. Well, they were a second ago. Uh, J.J. McCarthy's Pro Day. So that's what we have. Two hours of J.J. <laughs> McCarthy's Pro Day today. Oh, okay. uh, how are your brackets doing? Oh, boy. They had a great day yesterday. I don't know many people who had a great day yesterday. Yeah. Just anecdotally, of course. Some did. And congratulations to you. Um, we have nothing but college basketball today on the show. Uh, Tim Murray, host of Eason Primetime, will join us to give his picks for today and perhaps for tomorrow now that we have the first half of the round of thir uh, 32 set tomorrow as well after yesterday. Chris Felica, the Bear for the Bear Bets podcast over at Fox Sports. Same with him. Maybe he's got some other sports he wants to talk about. Uh, how about a little Adam Finkelstein from 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports HQ, his college basketball thoughts today on the games. Uh, Dr. Bob, he promised yesterday he'd come back on. He keeps that promise a little later on the show. Kansas didn't quite work out in the end for him yesterday. We'll get no, to that. And then Jason Weigarten usually comes to us from a cloud of smoke. I don't know. Maybe the cloud of smoke will be right here. I have. We have no idea. We have I, no idea. I have no idea. I, I produced the show. I have no idea if Jason's going to be here or not. <laughs> uh, I can tell you what. Yes, he's not going to be on Skype. I, if we have him, it will be, yes, the cloud of smoke will have be followed. Right here. <laughs> right here. The cloud of smoke will be right here. Um, all right, let's start, though, because we're going to have everybody giving their picks later on. Let's just talk about yesterday first and spend a little time on that. Um, March Madness never fails. Uh, and if we could just break these games yesterday down in two categories. One was the kind of snooze fest games, quite frankly. There were about 11 of those, 11 out of 16. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you wanted me to say that? Is that part of it? Like, I, just feel, I just feel like every year... You know, it's like, whoa, it's so crazy. And it's like, yeah, but a lot of the games suck. Yeah, yesterday. yeah, yesterday, 11 of the 16 were, were were blowouts. Five we'll get to, which were obviously just amazing in the way that they uh, the way developed. First of all, the 11 games that were uh, blowouts, and to varying degrees. Obviously, a lot of those were higher seeds. Uh, number three, Creighton covering against Akron, winning by 17, covering the 11 and a half. Uh, number one, UNC in the West. That was in the Midwest, by the way. Number one, UNC in the West uh, beat Wagner by 28. That was a 25 and a half point spread. Illinois over Moorhead State in the East. They won by 16, covering the 11 and a half. All these were covers. Iowa State, number two seed in the East, taking down South Dakota State by 17. That was a 15 and a half point spread. Uh, Gonzaga crushing McNeese in a 5-12, six and a half point spread in the Midwest. Uh, they won by 21. Tennessee, a two seed, crushing St. Peter's uh, by, what was that, 34. That was a 22 and a half point spread. And Texas getting back to a little little bit of a higher seed, a seven seed. That was a three and a half point favorite over Colorado State. They won by 12. I had Colorado State as my survivor team yesterday. By the way, yeah. I do have a buy-in, as I mentioned, so I'm back in today. One buy-in allowed. Um, Colorado State, who had held, remember we did that whole thing about Virginia being held scoreless for over 12 minutes against Colorado State. <laughs> Colorado State scored two points over a 15-plus minute span yesterday. You know what? You know what all I, get, I didn't want to text you because I knew you had your... It was almost worse. I knew you had your survivor going on this, so I didn't want to text you about it. And but it, it, They were up 8-2, to two and I was feeling like a genius. <laughs> all I was thinking about, though, was what we say all the time of, like, on a Thursday night football game, we're like, would you bet this if it was would in the middle of a Sunday <laughs> slice? Right. It felt the same way of, like, Virginia took all the heat the other night, yet, like, because you're buried in the middle of the first That's round... That's exactly you right. You can escape from it a That's little exactly bit. That's exactly right, because Virginia was a standalone. Yeah. By the way, Arizona, so all of those big favorites that we just mentioned and all of those higher seeds and lower seeds, not only won, not only advanced in brackets, but, but covered all the spreads. The Arizona almost was in that group, too. They crushed Long Beach State in a 215 out west. They had two bunnies at the end, and they only end up winning by 20 in a 20-and-a-half point spread. They missed the bunnies. So Arizona is the only one of these blowouts that I've mentioned so far that uh, didn't cover. Uh, but then add a few more longer seeds to the blowouts, the, and those were to start the day, and this is where I bring in the Megapod story from this year. Last year couldn't have been better. Well, this year, let's put it this way. Before you could say, hey, has the tournament started? Uh, <laughs> some picks blamed out. Uh, Michigan State crushed Mississippi State by 18. Mississippi State never even made a run in this game. That was a one-and-a-half point spread. And then Oregon, that was in the West, and Oregon in the Midwest is an 11 seed really crushed South Carolina. There's no other way to say it. That was a two and a half point spread. They won by 14. There was no real run in that game either. Todd uh, had both Mississippi State and 
South Carolina in his Final Four. Will had Mississippi State in his Final Four as well. So a year after those guys just murdered it, uh, the headlines from from the from the Megapod. Todd called it though. Todd said he goes, "I hate my bracket. This is going to suck. I'm just telling you, I'm not doing this two years in a row." And he even laments the fact that he he went up against Izzo and Altman, two of the most tried and true tourney coaches ever, and he, he you know. He does what a lot, he did what a lot of sports betters do. They just regret some of the stuff they do sometimes. And so Michigan State rolls, Oregon rolls, and then the other blowout, the eleventh of those, NC State as an eleven seed crushes Texas Tech. I keep using crush because they were all kind of snooze fest. This one was good for a half, I guess, and then NC State just uh, just absolutely outclassed them in the second half against the Red Raiders, uh, eighty to sixty-seven. They win as five-point dogs in that game. So those were eleven blowouts, and there wasn't much to those games. Um, by the way, the two DJs for uh, NC State, especially DJ Burns, just and they, they called it at halftime, Zach Randolph vibes from DJ Burns. And by the way, it has Jim Valvano. Not quite Jim Valvano but, uh, vibes with NC State, but this team is good. All right, then the five games where, and we'll break these down into two and three, because the, the, the last three are ones that people are just going to, just absolutely going to leave a mark on. But two of them, two of the longer seeds that won in close games, I had BYU going to the Final Four. Um, uh, as a ticket, and also I had you know a long shot to, for them to win all, but I really uh, my twelve to one for them to go to the final four that flames out as well. It's number eleven Duquesne, Duquesne, who had this is in the East, Duquesne who had hadn't been in the tournament since nineteen seventy seven. They beat BYU seventy one to sixty seven as nine and a half point dogs. Remember this was the game that people acted like they knew the final score. They couldn't bet BYU enough. Yep. got all the way up to ten Including at one point. Me, yep. To you, <laughs> but it was such a microcosm of BYU season. They yeah. fell down 14 points. I'm like, that's nothing for BYU. Sure enough, they they tied it, and then they lose at the end because that's just BYU. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, what they got cold from three early in the second half, and it was just it, that team can't get cold from three. I'm screaming at Khalifa the whole game. It's just like it's just get him out of the game. It's a whole thing yeah. with BYU. So I, I, I thought I was pretty impressed with Duquesne actually, though. I, I thought they played some good. Players. They were great. They're absolutely great. They they deserve credit. And then the other one of the of the five games that came down to uh to some drama and the biggest upset of the day, number 14 Oakland in the South beats Kentucky a 13 and a half point favorite. So this was not only the biggest up out, up you know outright upset in terms of a betting market, but also in terms of your brackets or if you had Oakland let's say in Survivor, every which way. Oakland beats Kentucky 80 to 76. Jack Golke for Oakland, 32 points on 10 of 23 point shooting, and this gives us our moment. I guess we'll have to save the the real three games that leave a mark for after the break here. But this gives us a moment to just talk about Coach Cal and Kentucky, and not to get two sports talk radio on you. But this is maybe the biggest sort of I don't know lie that has ever been thrown on the American sports betting public is how good some of these revered college coaches are, how respected they are for what they, are, for what they do. I, I've told this story maybe five times in, in all the years on, on a numbers game, but I, I go back to the year that C.J. McCollum and Lehigh upset Duke in a 15-2 game. I was on a flight. I was sitting in a middle seat. I sat in middle seats back in those days, Kelly. And uh, this guy to my right. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your budget. The guy on my right kept looking over. I was handicapping baseball. I was doing something on a spreadsheet uh, with my spreadsheets in baseball. And he, I could tell he was, like, looking over, over me. And then finally he spoke. He's like, oh, what are you doing there? I told him. And he goes, he, he waited a little while longer. He goes, oh, by the way, I, uh, you know, here I'm so-and-so. I'm an assistant coach on Lehigh. This was, like, right after they had pulled off the upset. And I've told this story before, and I started talking about the game, and he goes, and he started talking about, talking about, and again, another pregnant pause, and then finally he goes, you know what we couldn't understand? I was like, about what? About, about the game. What? He goes, that Coach K just didn't make any halftime adjustments whatsoever. None. And if you've ever listened to Alan Boston all these years, he always talked about how Coach Krzyzewski was never as good of a coach as people made him out to be. Uh, when I used to hang out with Bomani, he, he's a big North Carolina fan. He used to talk about Roy Williams, great recruiter, can't coach. Coach Cal had no answers yesterday. John Calipari had no answers for Oakland. Couldn't stop the kid from shooting the threes. Um, and again, he's got these, he, these freshmen who just had a bad game. And this is the unforgivable part. I'll just say this with X's nose. 
take a guy like Jim Harbaugh. When I was in the West Coast Conference tournament uh, a couple weeks ago, I talked to a guy who used to play for Harbaugh at the University of San Diego. And he said, he goes, Harbaugh isn't a great X's and O's guys, but he's a master motivator. And when something is amiss with his assistant coaches, he will step in. You have to have some basis in X's and O's. You have to remember that at the core, that's what you were. And with guys like Kalapari, it doesn't feel like he has any ability to coach his way out of anything. And, and regardless of how you feel about that part, the unforgivable part, the unassailably unforgivable part about this is, at the end of the game, he throws his freshman under the bus. You're 65 years old. They're teenagers. Take it, man. Like, haven't you evolved enough as a human being to, like, accept the responsibility? Well, you know, the freshmen just didn't play as well as they, uh, as well as they normally do. They didn't the shots they normally do. I, I mean, uh, I, that's just unacceptable. I, I think it's always, it's always a question in college sports, football or, or basketball. It's how good of a coach are you versus how good of a recruiter, right? You said something right there. I mean, I think Coach Cal probably, uh, uh, as much as anybody, like, at the core, I don't know, over the past dozen years, it's probably changed him being more of a recruiter. Imagine if we had a bad show, Kelly. Imagine. And I and I was like, well, you know, Kelly just wasn't as funny today. He, his, his arm swing wasn't as pronounced today. <laughs> it's all Kelly. It's just horrible. We'll get to another three games, the, the worst of the three yesterday that left a mark. Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. Start your morning with a daily dose of winning strategies, insider tips, and the latest buzz with the free v daily newsletter in today's newsletter. Oh, it's a lot of college basketball, Gil, as you can imagine. A lot of recap from yesterday, preview for today. Steve Mackinnon with a bunch of system plays and qualifiers for games going on this afternoon. All right. And once again, we're going to have uh, tons of folks here momentarily uh, stand by with all their picks today. Tim Murray, v Prime Primetime, Dr. Bob. Uh, Michael Montesano, I didn't mention, going to join us. He had, he was one of the few people I know had a great day yesterday, um, <laughs> and he gave out all those picks here on a numbers game. So he was, uh, he was on point with everything. So he'll join us again today. Uh, by the way, the Visa newsletter get expert analysis and the latest odds delivered straight to your inbox, absolutely free. Visit Visa.com/slash/newsletter to subscribe. Uh, once again, yesterday, I just want to not to beat the dead horse here with Kentucky, but uh, Dillingham, Rob Dillingham, two of nine from the field. Reed Shepard, uh, one of five from the field. And then uh, Cal's boy, DJ Wagner, 0 of five from the field. Um, it happens. They're freshmen. Oakland was is so much older than them. And it's just, again, how he handled it after the game, I could not believe. Oh, I was, could I was, not believe. I was watching. I had that on, like, second screen. Most of it was muted. And it just every time Golki had the ball. I'm like, what is this kid, like 30? Like, they, like you know, and you're like, I'm saying that. And then, of course, I turn up the volume later in the game, and they're like, Golki here in his sixth year of college. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I, his, uh, I, the comments after the game were, were, were weird to me from this day. You took it one, you took it one way. I, I'll take it another of, Coach Cal, you can complain. I'd still rather be in your shoes, though. I, I, I know NIL and transfer portal and everything changes changes sports i'd still rather be in the business of one and done college basketball than what everybody else is in so yeah sometimes sometimes your younger players aren't going to be able to get you home and you, these are going to happen but i'd still rather be in that business i don't know here's where i start to sound real old because again i grew up when patrick ewing played four years of college basketball and michael jordan played three I, I don't even have to go back that far let me just pick a random 90s player i don't know why his burst first <laughs> jumps in my head Keith Van Horn played four <laughs> years at Utah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, I mean, the quality was just different. It was a f fantastic, sp uh, just quality-wise. And we still love college basketball, don't get me wrong, but a lot of that is we bet. We have brackets. When it comes tournament time, we have Survivor. We have all these things. Um, not every game is a Rembrandt. Let's put it that yeah. way. Okay, but we have the 11 games where, uh, again, we're, we're, we're blowouts. Those two, Duquesne and Oakland, yesterday over BYU and Kentucky. Again, congratulations to all who had Duquesne and Oakland in their brackets or in survivor pools. Uh, by the way, yesterday I flamed out with Colorado State, but I do get the rebuy. I am going to take, I think, and I have three entries. I think two Wisconsins and one Utah State today. Got to play it more conservative now because I don't have right. Yeah. I don't have the safety net anymore. But the three games yesterday. Now Duquesne and Oakland. If you if you lost on BYU and Kentucky, you can be upset about it. But that was very much in character for BYU, 
and I hate to say it, we said this about Kentucky, right? All of our guests, when I asked the question, who's who's got the most wide range of outcomes in this tournament? I think we had one Gonzaga, but most people say Kentucky, right? That was their answer. They could they could go deep, they could flame out, and that's what happened. They flamed out. The, but the these, these were the – oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, just to finish up this one, yeah. go, Golke real quick. Did you, you, you catch the stat line? 10 for 20 10 for from 20, field, and then 10 two free for 20 throws. From, from three, and two free throws. Two free throws. Well, there was a stat. It was a, Clark Kellogg was saying yesterday, he's taking he's taken hundreds of shots. Like, I don't know how many total of years was it. Was it 200 plus or 400 plus? Yeah, I heard and this And only too. eight were two pointers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I heard I think I heard this morning it was, it was either four or six points he's scored all yeah. season that were two. Yeah, and Kenny Smith <laughs> immediately was like, oh, he'd have to drive if it were me. Like, he'd get up on him. <laughs> All right, but the three games, that, so those are, there's not really much you can say. I don't think you can complain that much. You sure you can complain about Cal, uh, but that's kind of BYU and that's kind of Kentucky. Yeah, I, I was on BYU. You can't complain you can't after complain. watching that game yesterday. I love you BYU, but I was like, yeah. that's exactly how they were all year. But these these three games, I think, left more of a mark yesterday than anything, which is, first of all, if you were on Nevada, my condolences to you. Uh, 10 seed Nevada in the western region. A 17-point lead, one-and-a-half-point favorites. A 17-point lead with just over seven minutes left in the game against number seven Dayton out west. And they lose it 63-60 to on the strength of a what was a 17 to nothing run to tie it and what was really a 24-4 to run after being down 17 the rest of the way. 24-4 to down the stretch, including the 17 to nothing run. And Nevada and Steve Alford get beat at the finish line and not only that they don't cover they don't hit on the money line nothing happens right so if you had Dayton what a uh, what a flourish of a win and what a comeback win so if you have Nevada I know that left a mark the other one was Drake Drake also in a 10-7 game this one in the east Drake also a one and a half point favorite again both the 10 seeds were favored in those two respective games Drake has an eight point lead with under seven minutes left and they lose to Wazoo uh, Drake, if you're watching this, because Drake was a very popular pick, of, of all the trendy picks, Drake was the one that like gave people a lot of excitement and thought, oh, well, this one's actually going to get home. Yeah, I had him. You had him, too. <laughs> <laughs> They're up eight with less than seven minutes left. Not only the up eight, they get the ball twice while, you know, they have the rock with the lead, and they just hoist up these ridiculous threes. Mm-hmm. And so they leave the door open, and Wazoo said, thank you very much. I'll walk through that. Um, remember... Drake was up on Miami late last year as well in the first round. They were up eight with less than five minutes to play against Miami last year in the first round and lost. And they lose. And remember, Miami got all the way to the final four after that. So remember, like a lot of these things on a fulcrum, we have no idea what fate would have had in store had it not gone that way. So it's two years in a row if you were on Drake. And then did you catch this last night? The third of these that left a mark. So if you were on Nevada, if you were on Drake, <laughs> my condolences every which way. If you were on Samford, now, I don't know how to feel about this one. This is the 13-4 game out in the Midwest. This was the last, already hadn't taken punches all day, whether betting or bracket-wise. This was the final insult to injury. Kansas is beating Samford by 22 early in the second half. 22. Forget the fact they don't have McCullers. It's like, easy peasy, we got this game. Well, not so much. Early second half, they're winning by 22. Sanford roars all the way back. Just over five minutes left, they had cut the, they cut the lead to one. Couldn't quite get over the hump. They cut the lead to one. Kansas got it back to a seven-point lead. Then it got down to one again in the closing seconds. And Kansas, with an, with an outlet pass to Nicholas Timberlake, who is going to the hoop. Remember, they're up one. We're talking about 14, 15 seconds left in the game now. And A.J. Staten McRae of Samford with, and this gets lost in it, with maybe the best play you'll ever see on defense. Yep. Comes up at the top of, of Timberlake's arc, or top of his jumping arc, I should say. Tips the ball out of his hands, prevents the basket. They blow the whistle. Re- and by the way, the announcers were all over. So Replays bad. clearly showed he didn't get touched. So bad. Timberlake makes two free throws. Sanford can't score, and that's the end of that. Kansas ends up winning by four. They don't cover, by the way, after winning by t- after winning by 22, or after leading by 22, I should say. But nonetheless, that was a brutal outcome for, forget betters, for, for the Sanford kids. 
And I don't know what, like, uh, by the way, I, I don't know. I c can't remember. Did a Kansas player get the get the loose ball? Did oh, a Sanford I, player? No, I think Sanford, Sanford did. did. Yeah, right? it was a clean block. It went off and the Sanford backboard, got. and it was a clean recovery. Yeah, it was a clean recovery, as we like to say in football. Clean recovery. Yeah. And they would have been down one with 14 seconds left in the game at that point. That's a, and I get it. People are like, oh, the last play of the game doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't determine the outcomes of these games. Yeah, but it was the biggest moment of the game. And it was just such a brutal call. And Charles Barkley made this point. Charles Barkley is always awkward when he does college basketball because he's very open about the fact that he hasn't watched any of it. But he, he, did, he did have a good salient point after this. He goes, for, the, for some of these games where the incessant reviews, like there were some of these games where just the last two minutes take forever. I, With yeah. all the incessant reviews, we can't review that? I don't know what the answer to this is. I mean, I get it. You can't change the rules on the fly. It, it, right. Well, obviously that. I'm, but I'm like, it is, it is the toughest part of that yesterday because how many games did you sit through before that oh. thinking, oh, my God, how much time are we taking to, uh, to, to review this? Like, it, it was ridiculous all day long. And then, yeah, you get to that point last night and you're like, wait, wait, but we can't. We can't oh, uh, look at this so and overturn. Yeah. So Kansas gets through, and now you got a Kansas Gonzaga game, which uh, again we'll talk to all of our guests here moving forward. Now everybody's got college basketball fix coming up, but uh, not just all of today's games, uh, the second half of the uh, round of 64, but also the first half of the round of 32, with those matchups being set for tomorrow. So are you? Uh, so again, my uh, survivor, two Wisconsin today, I believe, and one Utah State. I think I have settled that in my head. You, all right, how yeah. your brackets do? Terribly. Uh, I, I mean, I'm only in one bracket. Yeah. It's it's okay. Yeah. I guess it's not, it's not in shambles yet. Like, okay. you know, people will react after one day. RIP <laughs> BYU. You, you got to give the bracket at least two days to get completely killed, usually. Oh, uh, got, I... Bets today, though. FAU, Baylor, Auburn, TCU. Let's you're, go. You're betting them all. Bet all ATS. Them, yep. Say them again. FAU, Baylor, Auburn, TCU. I bet them all yesterday. We talked about it. Yep. Okay. Coming back, Tim Murray, all his plays today, his reactions to yesterday, but all of his plays today and tomorrow, it's a numbers game at Beeson, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Start betting smarter with a VSIN Pro subscription. Sign up on a VSIN Pro annual subscription today and get your first year for only $199 instead of the typical price of $240. Just use promo code ANG. Get VSIN Pro access to everything we do for an entire year. That includes our daily best bets with a leaderboard to see which VSIN expert has the hot hand. Betting splits to show you where the money and bets are moving for every game. Betting systems, premium analysis, and 24 7 video access, plus access to our March Madness betting hub with pick for every game of the tournament. Remember to use promo code ANG, though. Promo code ANG, as in a numbers game. Get Sign your, up now. <laughs> get your first year of VEASAN Pro Access for only $199. Sign up today at vsin.com slash subscribe. We get tweets at beating the book. This is from uh, Michael Barboza. Greetings again, Gil. Do you have any picks in Miami today? Didn't see any on the picks page this morning. Appreciate the help. Good luck today. Just one on the men's side, Alex Mickelson. Alex Mickelson, minus, very short minus money. Uh, I got him at minus 103 today in his match against Talon Greekspor. Mickelson, the only play in tennis today. Uh, J.D. Emmons, our buddy from Alabama. I gave the bet on every, oh, I gave the bet on every underdog a shot yesterday in the tournament. I didn't bet any game unless it was plus 130 or higher. Interestingly, I ended up plus five units for the day with Oakland at seven to one, the big winner. Cool way to play the first round. Uh, Mark Hansen, I placed my first college basketball live bet last night. I have now experienced the spinning wheel of death. At least the Kansas Sanford over got home. Chance Copperpot also did the experiment. I bet all of the dogs in the first round one unit. I skipped one game because of even odds, but bet the rest. After day one, up 3.25 units. Let's see how it goes. Len Glauzenski, Calipari is a terrible coach. All he can do is recruit, and that is only because he is in bed with the AAU coaches. Joe Nigro, how dare you question Coach Cal? He did teach them, after all, free throws to toss the ball to the ref. And on and on. We'll read more. Tim Murray joins us now, everybody. He is the co-host of Beeson Primetime, weekday, 6 p.m. right here at the network. He joins us now to uh, perhaps lament yesterday and rejoice that it's a new day today, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. How you doing, Tim? 
It's a new day, yes. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll praise my guy Jack Golke for Oakland. Um, the the guy that I would love to be when I get older. Just shoot threes, do <laughs> nothing I, else. When I get uh, older, that's right. He uh, that the stat that I tweeted out: three hundred entering yesterday, three hundred twenty-seven three pointers attempted, eight two pointers. That's the one. and uh, <laughs> that's what he did yesterday. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, uh, so uh, a fun. Uh, a fun result there. Uh, shouts to uh, Jonathan Von Tobel, my partner. Didn't have money line, but uh, did have Oakland plus the points. And uh, we had a little first to 10 during the show, which was fun. And that's where I'm trying to look positively because uh, I don't know how many of you had Drake, but uh, for a second straight year, up eight with under eight to go yeah. and completely melted down. I, I just talked about it. Nevada, Drake, <laughs> oh. Samford. Samford in a different way, right? Because they got screwed by the by the call at the end but uh, but Nevada and Drake yeah Nevada and Drake just blowing leads Drake as you said for the second straight year those are the ones I think that left the biggest mark before we get on to today and tomorrow I mean, it, it, go, go ahead Tim well, I was just gonna say I mean that that's the thing about this this crazy tournament we love it so much we love to bet it sometimes you're gonna have great days but you know uh, I'll give you uh, and, you know, teams that shoot the ball well end up not shooting the ball well. Creighton is a good shooting team, but they shot, you know, 10 of 16 from three. Is that sustainable? Probably not. But, uh, you know, we move on and uh, we try to handicap this this bad boy our be the best of our capabilities. Yeah, the big beneficiaries, by the way, from, uh, you know, from uh, Kentucky losing and Texas Tech losing is obviously in that region in the south. And you would think that it is the Houstons and the Marquettes of the world, right? Like all of a sudden now that becomes a thing. Like, did, are you are you feeling like if you are a guy who has Houston going all the way right now that you should feel that much better after yesterday? Well, I am a guy who has Houston going all the way, so I do feel better, Gil. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, we they, they got to keep on uh, keep on winning. And, you know, Texas A&M, if they're to beat Nebraska – with that bully ball kind of mentality where they just brick every shot, but go and get offensive rebounds, best offensive rebounding team in the country. Um, I, I think that could be kind of a, a unique matchup for Houston uh, in the second round there. If, uh, if the, if the Aggies are able to beat the Cornhuskers, you know, today, but yeah, I mean, I, I felt like Houston, um, the offense makes me a little bit nervous, but when you look at a team like Kentucky, um, we know what they're capable of on the positive end, but what we saw last night and their poor defense is what they're, uh, you know, likely to do from a defensive standpoint. So, yeah, I mean, if you're Mar if you have a Marquette to the Sweet 16 or Marquette to the Elite Eight, you feel phenomenal oh, yeah. right now because there were questions about them uh, getting out of the bottom part of the bracket with Tyler Kolick. And, you know, Gil, we talked about it on our show uh, prior to the start of the tournament, I felt like Marquette was a little overinflated uh, from an odds perspective to win their to win the West region just because of the uncertainty of Tyler Kolick. So uh, if you do have a Marquette to get to the final four uh, future yesterday was a great day for you, uh, obviously, because the three and the six both got eliminated. Yeah. And just a, again, quantified in Ken Palm terms, because we talked about how UConn got the worst of it in terms of their region. Yep. And other teams got the best of it. Houston now, with those two eliminations of, of Kentucky and Texas Tech yesterday, uh, in top 24, Ken Palm, I use that because St. John's was 25th headed into the tournament. Uh, only Marquette and Duke now exist in their region. Uh, that is top 24, Ken Palm. So to quantifying it that way. Uh, last thing before we get your picks, a uh, real quick answer. Beyond yeah. what we've talked about, what was your biggest, like, what team stood out to you as, okay, they could actually make a deeper run than most people think? Was it NC State? Was it Oregon? Was it Michigan State? Uh, I'll say Oregon. Uh, you know, I think, you know, everybody loves Tom Izzo, rightfully so. And, man, the uh, social media love for him. Oh, you can't bet against him in March. Well, he's like two games over 500 ATS. But, you know, let's just make stuff up. You know who is? unstoppable so it seems in March Dana Altman he's a he's Dana 16 Altman. 6 and 1 now ATS in March uh it feels like this team is is starting to pick up steam obviously they're an underdog but this thing opened seven and uh got bet down to uh to I believe five and a half is where we sit now um I'm fascinated to see this game on uh on late Saturday night 
uh, Oregon and Creighton. I think uh, Oregon has the chance to uh, to be very competitive. I took a little five and a half, uh, just kind of off, you know, uh, quick glance. But uh, I would say Oregon of those teams you mentioned, um, you know, look, Creighton, I think what they have going for them, Gil, is this. They don't make mistakes and they have the ability to get white hot from three. And we saw that against UConn. Uh, Baylor Shireman was hitting everything under the sun yesterday. Stephen Ashworth, the transfer from Utah State, could do the same. And then Ryan Kalkbrenner is just so long and so fundamentally sound that they don't foul uh, whatsoever. So if we were in theory to get a Creighton Purdue elite eight, I would just be so intrigued by that because Purdue loves to live on the, uh, on the free throw line and, uh, and Creighton just does not foul whatsoever. Yeah. By the way, Marquette Duke, Wisconsin, the other Ken Palm teams in Houston's region, I left out Wisconsin. All right. So then what do you like best today? Uh, Preflop. Yeah, a couple games uh, we'll, we'll run through quickly. We're starting to get this line moving away from me a little bit as a big favorite. Uh, when this uh, when this matchup popped, uh, I did like Baylor. Uh, they opened as low as, I think, 13 and a half, maybe even 12 and a half at one point. Uh, we're getting up to the 14 and a half, 15 range, starting to get a little, little uncomfortable. Uh, but I, I think one thing, Gil, uh, about Colgate is people know the name at this point, right? If you're a college hoops fan, even if you're a casual college hoops fan, because they've been here 2019, 2021, 2022, 2023. But this team is completely different uh, than what we've seen in the past. Those four teams were all in the top 100 of offensive efficiency. This team is north of 200. I just don't think this Colgate team is on the same level as as the teams we've seen in recent years. So I think Baylor, uh, with the athleticism that they have, has the capabilities to, to blow this game out uh, against Colgate. The one worry I have of backing a, a favorite of this size like Baylor is that they don't really go with a crazy pace. Uh, in 2021, we saw Arkansas make uh, Colgate feel very uncomfortable with full court pressure. And uh, Baylor, you know, one of the slower teams in the country. So uh, that was one game I was looking at uh, from a, from a pre-flop angle. Uh, a couple other games real quickly. Uh, UAB, San Diego State, you know, you're patting at 12 versus five. I think UAB of the of the 12s, maybe getting the least amount of notoriety. Uh, they are the lowest ranked per Ken Palm, the only one north of 100. Uh, but I think this is a team in UAB hitting its stride. Gill at the right time, winning the American Athletic Conference. San Diego State, very sound defensively, has a big in Jaden Ledee, who is, a, who is a force down low. But I have questions about their guard play, their shot-making capabilities. So I think UAB plus six and a half is certainly... Uh, worth a look. And then uh, real quickly before I get out of here, uh, I'm going to take the bait. I love New Mexico. I know Mountain West play has not gone well. Look at Nevada. Uh, look at Colorado State. But I love the guards that they have in, uh, in Jalen House and Donovan Dent and Jamal Mashburn Jr. Clemson went 10 and 10 after the new year. So I'm going to ride with the Lobos. Favorite thing tomorrow real quick is? Uh, I'll take the points of Oregon against Creighton. Okay. All right. Tim Murray, everybody. At one Tim Murray. That's the number one Tim Murray. Be some primetime weekday, 6 p.m. Tim, may today be better for you, sir. We, Godspeed, everyone. <laughs> Godspeed. <laughs> we we love this tournament, and then when it goes, it goes against you, like, I hate this tournament. No, we love it, of course. Chris Felica loves it. He's got his place. College Hoops and Beyond. Next, Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. There's never been a better time to have skin in the game with DraftKings Sportsbook because right now we have a v exclusive offer for new DraftKings customers. Earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager. That is a deal right there. You can earn up to $2,500 worth of bonus bets in your first three days on DraftKings. Do not wait. Download the app now. Use code ANG when you sign up and earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager now. Promo code they got to use for that, Kelly, once again is... A-N-G, like a numbers game. Listen to the man. With so many bottles to choose from, it's easy to find your favorite. All at the lowest prices for over 30 years. Find what you love and love what you find at Total Wine & More. Drink responsibly. B-21. Skill Alexander. Uh, I just want to read this one tweet because I think it's indicative of something I wanted to bring up. This is from uh, Paul Tony at Tone44Tony. I don't know, he might be in. He might be in Tony, Tony, Tony for all I know. Tony, 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 <laughs> with uh, 
Tim Meadows. <laughs> Tony, 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 Tony. The question the way, mark. Tony, Tony, Tony show. Maybe the greatest show I've seen this year. I mean, recent times, I should say. Lauren Hill coming, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Paul Tony says, many thanks to the good Dr. Bob for saving many brackets for me. So Bob did not cover with Kansas yesterday in the pick that he gave, but uh, he gives for his clients, he gives bracket advice, and it was spectacular. And so good on you, Paul Tony, for, for saying that. I just want to bring that up because it is amazing. Like we've said this before, but it's amazing. So like, let's take, t let's take a Will and Todd on the Megapod. Will and Todd could not have had a more unbelievable Megapod performance last year to the point that Todd almost could have won a million dollars, right, in DraftKings. And Will had FAU in the Final Four. So they both had Mississippi State. Before you could even say, hey, as the tournament started, Mississippi State loses. And it is amazing to me the incoming that they took on this. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> guys, uh, did you just forget? And, and maybe you're new to the Megapod. Well, then you picked the wrong. Like one guy said, this is the worst decision I've ever made in my life. I was like, your life's probably pretty good then, huh? And he sort of backed down <laughs> after that. Right, yeah. But it is incredible. And so, like, you know, Bob Bob was taking for Kansas. Kansas was up 22. Yeah, terrible pick. Uh, Chris Valika joins us now. He is the Bear from Fox Sports Bear Bets podcast, which he is the host of, uh, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. You were talking to us off air about Drake as well. You took a little incoming yeah. for that. Yeah, so yeah, second yeah, 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 terrible to uh, pick Drake as a potential Sweet 16 team up up late again, and for the second straight year, like Tim was talking about, complete meltdown in, in, down the stretch. You have, have South Dakota State plus 16 and a half, down what four? I think they got it to in the second half, wind up losing by 17. Yeah, it, it, it was it was one of those days. They hopped on Kentucky uh, money line yeah. at halftime. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, it, it, it was just. One of those days that that we've all kind of had, where basically everything went wrong. But the only thing that did uh, go go well for me yesterday was actually being on Kansas and Survivor. So I don't think I would ever plan on using them again. And they did ultimately surprise. And so many of those top picks, whether it was BYU or uh, someone else, did actually uh, go down. So maybe in the long run, the upsets will. Uh, We'll pay off if I can work my way through for all, 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 only five more rounds of a uh, survivor to get there. Right? What, what <laughs> five more, five more rounds. My days, you, you have to count the days, yeah. not the rounds. Uh, who will you have in survivor today, sir? I think I'm going to use Northwestern and Clemson again, teams oh, wow. that I don't expect to have. Uh, but, but you, 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 you used this mentality yesterday too in picking an underdog. You yeah. got to use a team that you think yeah. you're not going to want to have moving forward. Uh, a lot of they're getting games today that moving forward, I'm going to like certain teams and I'm going to try and stay away from some of the popular picks that I like. I took Northwestern plus three earlier in the week and now they're four and a half and I don't get it. I know they've got some injuries, but people just keep banking on FAU showing up the way they did last year. Well, they're running out of chances to do that and they just lost the temple in the conference tournament. So I don't like them. And I know the, the, the note I tweeted out about 11 seeds being favored over six seeds, and now they basically all won going back the last 10, 15 years or so. But there's something about the, the, the Nevada collapsing and Colorado State looking terrible. Um, and, and I think Clemson is a little bit underrated. So uh wish Nev and I are going to go down with the ship with Clemson, I think. Yeah. I go Clemson. So I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to back two dogs. Uh, Clemson and Northwestern amongst my survivor picks. Clemson feels like the ultimate contrarian pick, and they're the higher-seeded team today. Mm -hmm. Ultimate contrarian. By the way, uh, Northwestern, of course, led by the great Boo Booey, who Steve Fezzik referred to earlier on, this week on the show as uh, Boo Boo Booby. <laughs> That's exactly. As opposed to Baba -ba Booby. Yeah, Boo Boo Booby, he called him. Uh, all right, what other, what other ATS? Anything else pre-flop ATS today? Yeah, I... Um, uh, Played uh, St. Mary's minus five and a half against Grand Canyon. Uh, if if Grand Canyon maybe would have been drawn against another team, I would have been on Grand Canyon. Like, like that was it. That, people talk about the, the Megapod how terrible. Like that was one of the great points that Todd made. Like there were certain teams that he had an idea yes. on he wanted to fade or back, and like they're all drawn either against each other or against in spots that were terrible. Like this is a I don't think a great spot for Grand Canyon at all, just the, the way they play, going against an experienced team uh, with, with good guards, a, a good post player, a team that's well coached and drilled, but then I kind of got right, not going to rattle uh, with, with that slower defensive minded, like, I like St. Mary's moving forward, I actually have St. Mary's in the Sweet 16, 
and potentially the uh, the elite eight. But I, I didn't like this matchup at all for Grand Canyon, so I, I laid I laid the five and a half with St. Mary's, and I took the uh, the three, and you can now get four and a half with Northwest. Yeah, Doctor Bob. And I, I, I did I, I did I did I almost played Baylor, but it, but it got a little bit too rich for my blood uh, with, with where it is now. I did play Baylor to win the region, so I'm just gonna sit and hope they uh, they don't go the way at Kentucky. Yeah, um, Bob was on yesterday. He'll be on later today. But one of the things he said yesterday, because we're going through bracket strategy and how you want to go contrarian with what the, mm -hmm. the general populace is picking. And St. Mary's to the Final Four was his suggestion in terms of maximizing your uh, contrarian, uh, you know, aspect of your of your brackets. Um, I want to bring up that point you made about Todd, because I brought this up yesterday, too. That's like the biggest difference. I mean, there's lots of big differences between mainstream media and, and the betting media. But while, you know, while everybody appropriately was killing the committee for having Virginia in and we talk about who's in, who's out in mainstream, that was the biggest thing, I think. You're right about the Megapod from a macro standpoint, which is from a, from a betting standpoint, that was the cruelty of this bracket. Forget about who's in and who's out. It was just that teams you wanted to bet on ended up generally against each other, and teams who you wanted to fade generally ended up against each other. Not completely, but there were so many examples of that that it kind of muted your, your excitement level on this. Um, anything tomorrow, now that we have the first round of the uh, first half of the round of 32 scheduled? Yeah, I, I, I can see my side. I haven't bet it yet. I, I'm going to see if it maybe uh, climbs up a tick or so. I, I can see myself back in Michigan State. The number is really low, which would seems to me that people are going to be attracted uh, to taking the one seed at a short number. I don't know if that's the right play or not. Yeah. But uh, North, uh, North Carolina looked great yesterday, albeit against a team that had like three players by the end of the game, it seemed like. But uh, but Michigan State played great, and we like to joke about the, the December, January, February is on. Oh, no, this is the one team – that, that Michigan State really hasn't been able to figure out in the NCAA tournament. Uh, maybe the different coach now in there with, with different style. Maybe uh, that that will uh, that will lend to uh, to help Michigan State. I, I can see myself uh, hold the Michigan State, especially if it, uh, is it four out there? Because I, I know four. I saw some three and a half. Four. Yeah. Is it four? Yeah. I, I, I can see myself holding the Michigan State plus four. And then there is a a part of me that wants to take Oregon plus the. Uh, plus the points against Creighton is because it's an Oregon team that uh, I think we saw yesterday with, with, with Dante on the inside and Cuisinart on the, like on the perimeter, like they're a good team that, that probably was an NCAA tournament team, but they just didn't have the, the some of their parts uh, for, for the entire year. They, they didn't get a, a, a great draw here because they got, they got a team with a, with a, a big post player as well and a team that shoots the ball well and a team that doesn't foul. And I, I would think that, Oregon might get a tough whistle in this game, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep on this and see if I uh, can, can want want to play this. And I, and I and I can see Iowa State blowing out Washington State tomorrow. I'll uh, Cyclones. I'll tell you my instincts, so, and you tell me if I'm ridiculous on these two tomorrow. I feel like laying the points with Gonzaga, laying the four against Kansas, mm -hmm. might be the move. And I feel like laying the five and a half with NC State against Oakland might be the move. NC State feels to me like we're kind of you know again they had that great run in mm -hmm. the acc tournament and again that what's the what was the conventional wisdom that people are, oh well you got to be exhausted i mean they're kids right they're not that exhausted they've had no. they've had days to relax um they've got they've got in dj burns this player that is so different from everybody else and it's just an interesting team to see how far they can get in this. And they get Oakland, right? So yep. this, here's the Sweet 16. Take it. It's right there for you. I think they. I think they're right. You know what the thing is today? Also, last thing before we go. Uh, Houston is playing Longwood. Mm -hmm. The under on the Longwood team total. Could you see this game being one where like they struggle to score at all? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually I did take under 51 and a half. In you total did for a. Uh, a long one because I, I, I'm glad you said that because I could see this being like like 39 22 at halftime or totally. something like that. And so, you get totally total slug fest. Still be better than Colorado State's 11 yesterday at the half. Good, <laughs> good God. Thank you, Chris. Enjoy the games, man. You got it, bud. Chris Valika, the bear from Fox Sports Bear Bets podcast at Chris Valika on Twitter. Lepitard next on DK. We're coming back at Visa, the Sports Betting Network.